So I used to really hate mowing my yard. The thought of spending hours out in the hot sun made me just not want to mow as much, which ended up making my yard worse over time. But thanks to technology, we can now automate that process too. This robot behind me can quietly cut perfect rows, avoid trees and toys, and doesn't need one single boundary wire. This is the GOAT A2500 RTK from Ecovax, and it's the first mower that I've used that's been actually easy to set up. Hey there neighbors, I'm Ryan the Tech Guy, and welcome back to this smart house. Your destination for the coolest new smart home gear and the best in smart home automations. Now one of the most exciting advancements in smart home technology is that of yard robots. Yep, it's just like the vacuum robots that we're used to seeing inside, but made to mow and maintain your yard instead. So today we're gonna get hands-on with the Ecovax GOAT A2500 RTK. Now today's video is gonna be focused on features, performance, and my first impressions after using it in my yard for the last few weeks. In the last few weeks of my testing, I found a lot of positives about the robot, but also a few issues along with some tips I'm gonna share. Now I've already passed these quirks onto Ecovax, but the good news is, is I think the majority of them can be fixed with future software updates. And they've also been very helpful during the testing process. So before we get started, a quick thank you goes out to Ecovax for sending over the GOAT A2500 and for sponsoring this video. While this is a sponsored video, all opinions and impressions you hear are my own based on my weeks of real world experience. So let's take a look at the GOAT A2500 RTK and see if it's gonna be a good match for your lawn this year. Now to start out, what really sets the GOAT apart from other mowers on the market is its navigation system. It uses a hybrid of RTK or real-time kinematic satellite-based positioning and onboard vision and LiDAR. Now RTK offers centimeter level accuracy. This is far beyond what standard GPS can do. And it does this by comparing satellite signals to a fixed base station, which comes with a robot. Now Ecovax has built on their expertise from indoor vacuum robots, but enhanced it with RTK for outdoor precision. Plus they combined this with LiDAR and visual detection. So the GOAT can navigate precisely even when GPS signal is temporarily blocked by trees or buildings. So what does all this tech mean for your lawn? This means it can do clean rows, miss fewer patches, and a whole lot less hassle. This hybrid navigation system enables one of the GOAT's best features, auto mapping. Instead of laying out boundary wire or manually driving the robot around with your phone, the GOAT can automatically explore and create a map of your lawn. It builds a digital twin of your yard that it'll use for future mowing sessions. We'll look at this a little bit later on. Now the mower also features what they call true edge cutting. This allows it to mow closer to borders than most of the competitors out on the market. Plus it has a dual floating blade system that adjusts to uneven terrain and provides a consistent clean cut. Now what's unique is these two cutting heads are actually slightly offset, allowing the blades to overlap each other. This prevents annoying patches of grass getting missed by going down the middle between the two blades. This ensures complete coverage with every pass. Plus it can handle up to a 50% slope thanks to its high torque 32 volt platform. And I was surprised at how well a two wheel mower can do even on wet grass. Now it is rated to cover up to 2,700 square feet which is roughly 5 eighths of an acre, making it a great fit for most suburban yards. One standout feature that you'll find on other mowers as well is how quiet it operates. There's no engine noise, and you can barely hear it cutting the grass. It's quiet enough to run at 7 a.m. without waking up the whole neighborhood. You can adjust the cutting height from 1.2 to 3.5 inches directly from the Ecovax app. The GOAT also operates at a mowing speed of 2.3 feet per second. This gives it solid area coverage without rushing through the job. Also, it recharges in just 45 minutes. So if you have a larger yard that takes more than one session, it'll go back to the dock automatically, recharge itself, and resume from when it left off. Now, like all robot mowers, the GOAT works best as a maintenance solution. Meaning for optimal results, you wanna start using it at the beginning of the season and run it every few days, or start at a higher height and work your way down. This approach prevents clippings from building up and trims just the tip of the grass, which is healthier for your lawn. So now that we've seen what the mower can do, let's look at how to actually use it. Now the GOAT A2500 offers extensive control through its app with connectivity options that give you some flexibility in your setup. You can either connect it directly to Wi-Fi or you can control it locally with Bluetooth. The Bluetooth option is a nice touch because if the mower is just too far outside of your Wi-Fi range, you can still map and control the robot without needing to extend your network. And unlike other brands I've used, this is actually a full one-to-one -one capability. So you get the same features on the Wi-Fi as you do on the Bluetooth, which is really nice. 
Now at the top right of the app, you'll find three main menus, video, map, and settings. The video menu lets you see what the robot sees in real time. This is helpful for checking on progress or troubleshooting remotely. Plus you can use it to monitor your yard. Now the map menu is where you create, edit, and manage your zones. In this menu, we can combine or divide zones, create paths that go between the different zones, define no-go areas, and adjust the boundary buffer. Now on the subject of mapping, this is where the GOAT really shines compared to other models that I've tested. It uses AI and onboard cameras to automatically map your yard. So if you're creating a new area and it's fully enclosed by a fence or hardscape like concrete, the mower can handle the mapping automatically. But for more open areas, especially areas that you might share with a neighbor, you can manually trace the shared boundary and then let the GOAT take over and finish mapping the rest. This is very handy and the only robot I've seen do this so far. But it doesn't come without a few issues. If you're crossing long distances like a large driveway with a path, sometimes it won't register and save that path. And closely placed sections like my backyard and side yard over here that are separated by a fence were interpreted as one single area. This caused some return to dock issues because obviously it can't go through the fence. But I'm currently working on trying to solve this by adding in some buffer zones. Now if you go to the settings menu, you can control height, speed, scheduling, edge mode, animal detection, and even more. And as I mentioned before, you cannot set the mowing direction per zone, but you can set it globally for your entire yard. Another nice feature though is you can have it automatically change directions 90 degrees each time it mows. That'll create the checkerboard pattern for a more professional look. Now, when you're setting up the robot for the first time, the RTK settings menu is really helpful. It shows you where on your property that you might have weak GPS signals, helping you optimize placement of the base station and understand potential navigation issues. So real quick, if you're enjoying this deep dive, please be sure to hit the subscribe button because later this season, I'm doing a full comparison of all the robot mowers that I've tested. So you don't wanna miss that breakdown. Now the RTK station should ideally be about six and a half feet away from your house for best satellite visibility. That being said, mine works even a little closer. And if needed, you can wall mount it higher up for better reception. Just keep in mind the RTK station needs to be powered. So it's gotta be close to somewhere that has an outdoor rated plug or you can run it indoors. Now the charging dock does need a flat surface, power and a clear view of the sky. I've got mine in a rock border near the side of my house. It's out of the way, but fully functional. Now be sure to use the included ground screws to lock it into place. That helps prevent minor shifts that could affect mapping. Now app setup is extremely simple. Scan the QR code on the back of the robot, connect it to your Wi-Fi, install any firmware updates, and set a pin code. This keeps the robot secure if somebody happens to steal it or take it off your property. On that subject, theft protection includes an onboard alarm and real-time GPS tracking through the app. If the mower is lifted or leaves the mapped area, you'll get alerted. And as I mentioned before, if the mower is powered off or removed from your yard, the pen lock prevents someone from using the mower again without your number. These security features gives you a little peace of mind, helping deter theft or unauthorized use by ensuring only you can operate the mower. Here's a little extra tip. If you want a little bit extra insurance, go ahead and stick an AirTag or compatible tracker in the top of the mower unit, because that way you'll have the ability to track it even outside of the Ecovacs app. Now maintenance is pretty straightforward. The unit is IPX6 rated, meaning that it can survive most outdoor conditions. You can rinse it off with a hose, but I always tell people to skip pressure washers or spraying from underneath. And the blades are super easy to replace. You also wanna check wheels for clogs every few runs to keep things running smoothly. In addition, there is an emergency stop button on the back, which is great for maintenance. So if you do run into a problem, you can hit that button, or if you're doing maintenance, hit that button and then turn it off. That way you know everything is safe and ready to use. So let's look at a quick list of pros and cons. Now on the pro side, the big one over the old generation of robot mowers is the fact that you need no boundary wires. Certain properties couldn't even use them. With RTK and the LiDAR on board, you can set it up super easy and you don't have to worry about burying all those lines. It also has really quick setup with a very intuitive app that takes you through all the steps. It also gives you a clean, professional looking stripe-like mowing pattern which is really nice, especially if you're like me and you used to mow with a push mower and your yard just looked as good as it did. It's also extremely quiet. This is nice because I like to sit outdoors and it's really annoying to hear all the neighbors with their loud mowers, so I don't have that issue. It can also handle slopes and obstacles pretty well and being able to adjust the cutting height from the app is a nice touch. Plus, like I mentioned at the top, it does mow up to 2,700 square feet, which is ideal for most people in suburbia like I am and can get you up to a larger lot if you need it. 
Plus, it also has that quick 45 minute recharge time. So even if it only gets half your lawn done in one go, it can quickly recharge and start again. Now looking at some of the negatives, I mentioned a lot of these already in the video. One of them is you can't set a mowing angle per zone in your yard. It's applied globally across the entire yard. Plus, it's based on dock orientation. So you actually have to go in and dial it in based on the orientation of where the dock is when it charges. Now, other brands let you fine tune your angles per every area, which is useful for more complicated yards or keeping a consistent pattern throughout. Also, if the robot has an issue mid job, there's no way to resume it from a certain percentage. Again, I've seen this on other robots, and it's nice if you do run into an issue and you have to manually move the robot out of the zone, you can resume from where it left off. Hopefully they'll get that added very soon. As I mentioned also, the path saving can kind of fail if you have a long distance path, so be aware if you have a wide driveway. And that issue where I encounter where close sections are automatically mapped together, especially if you're using the auto map, can create problems if you have fences, so keep that in mind. I'd recommend instead of allowing it to auto map, when you get to those areas that are shared, go ahead and manually take over and mow those sections. Now these aren't deal breakers and Ecovacs has been responsive to my feedback so far. So I'd love to see a future firmware update address these issues and add new features as the years go on. One thing I forgot to mention during mapping is it has the ability to back up. So if you make a mistake while mapping, you just have to hold the rollback button and the robot will back up retracing its steps deleting the section of the map along with it so you can resume and fix your error, which is pretty nice. So what you want is clean lines, quiet mowing, and absolutely no wire digging. The GOAT A2500 might just be your new favorite lawn tool. With its RTK positioning, smart mapping, and excellent build quality makes it a very capable mower. Now I have tested this for about three weeks on my property that has some slopes, trees, garden beds, and play equipment plus a ton of toys, dishes, and bowls that get left outdoors when they're out playing. It handled about 95% of my mowing needs, leaving only a few edge spots that I need to occasionally touch up with my trimmer. Now we come to the all-important topic, the price. At $17.99, it's priced as a premium mower, but if you compare it to other RTK-based models that run in the $2,000 to $2,500 or even more, it's pretty competitively positioned. Now I find this mower is gonna be a great choice for those who have yards with consistent lawn areas and simple borders, and homeowners who want automated low maintenance solutions but are willing to get out and do a little bit of trimming along fences or the edge of houses. But it might not be the best option for those folks who have yards that are split up by large driveways or fences, you have a property that has many different fence zones, or complex landscaping with fragmented areas. If your yard fits in the first category, then the GOAT A2500 RTK might be a fantastic investment because you really have to look at how much money you're spending on maintenance of your mower and if you happen to pay somebody to take care of your lawn, how much you're spending on that every single week or month over all of your summers. And it really only takes a couple of years to break even. Now you'll find links to the GOAT A2500 RTK below if you wanna check out specs or pricing. I've also included links to some accessories that you might find useful. Now as always, using these links helps support the channel at no extra cost to you. It's a simple way to help me keep making honest, hands-on videos just like this one. Now, if you want to see a comparison to some of the most popular mower brands, make sure you're subscribed. I've got a video coming out here later on in the season. Another big thank you goes out to Ecovacs for sending over the mower and their continuous support of this channel. Now, if you want to see my other mower videos, I've got a dedicated playlist right over here. Or if you want to see my other Ecovacs videos, I've got a playlist over here. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.